It's a video game episode. Kind of, sort of, not really. Hey, Vibots, I'm back, and today we're doing something fun, but we can't do that until I show you my super cool pastel rainbow sequin bucket. It does not look quite as cool on camera as it does in person, so pretend that was more impressive, okay? On to the purpose of today's video. A while back I did a video comparing teeny tiny cars where I discovered world's smallest. If you didn't see that video, feel free to check it out somewhere up here. But if you don't want to, that's okay. Basically, I discovered that I loved world's smallest, and I said, hey, if anybody from world's smallest sees this, feel free to send me stuff because I like it. And guess what? Somebody saw that, and they were all like, Jen! We got you. So they went ahead and sent me a whole bunch of stuff. We're not gonna focus on all of it today. I'm gonna save it for another video, but I did wanna show you how cool some of it is. So I ended up with a super teeny little Rubik's Cube, a really cute little Etch-A-Sketch, the 1965 astronaut Barbie, a super teeny little light bright, a little blue doodle top, and even some teeny little silly putties. And I got blue and red in there. Let's do it. Ow! Not only are they super cute, but they're actually perfect size little props to add to dollhouses or to actually be used by some of your dolls, like the 18 inch ones. They're like legitimately perfect sizes. In addition to all that great stuff, they also sent me all these really cool little arcades. But I'm not gonna show them to you guys right now because I want you to see them in better detail when we switch down to the table. But we can't do that yet because first, we've got a bucket of LOLs. Ha! This video is just full of surprises. <laughs> so uh, just like the first half of this, a while back I made a video about LOL Boy Series. And in that video, we tested out the weight hack to try to complete the full series collection in one shot. If you wanna check it out, feel free to up here. I'm definitely not ashamed to plug my past videos. <laughs> but if you don't want to, that's okay. Spoiler alert, it didn't work. So uh, today we're gonna move on to episode two of LOL Boy Hacks. And we're gonna be trying out the ball placement hack. So just like the little arcades, we're gonna move down to the table where I will, one, show you the ball, just in case you've never seen that before, and two, explain how the placement hack works. Wish me luck. But before we go, I can't just segue without trying to juggle at least once because it's what we do. We do a lot of things here, apparently. True story, I haven't learned to juggle since the last time you saw. So, down we go. Okay guys, here are all three of the LOL surprise boys I have today. And each of these were specifically chosen using a placement hack that is meant to help us find Boy Next Door. Now before we move on, I'm gonna give you the quick rundown on how to use the placement hack to find Boy Next Door yourself. So that way, if we open these up and Boy Next Door is in them, boom, you know how to do it yourself. And if they're not, well then, just disregard everything that I said about the hack. And also, FYI, this is not my hack. This is according to the internet, and. Jen is just testing it. And now because Toys R Us would not give me an empty box, we'll have to give you some magical editing skills. Here is our LOL Surprise Boy Series box. In order for this hack to work, potentially, you will need to find yourself an untouched box that has not been rifled through at all and be looking at it head on as though the opening is directly in front of you. So you could take out your ball and put it in and all that jazz. An LOL Surprise Boy Series box will have 12 balls in it and the box itself will be broken up into three layers, a bottom, a middle, and a top. And now we will magically open our box and look at it top down. Dang it, we've got an empty box. So let's go ahead and add ourselves four LOL balls. The first ball equals top left, second, top right, third, bottom left, and fourth, bottom right. Now according to the hack, you are gonna need to get the top left ball from the bottom layer. So basically, if you can't open the top and take them all out, you're gonna have to look like a crazy person and stick your hands in and kind of hold the upper balls out of the way while you remove the other three on the bottom layer to get the back corner. No one said this was easy, okay? And believe me, I know how crazy that is because Clearly, I did it three times. I'm gonna start with this ball here in the center and we're gonna do this quick because we've done this before. If you wanna check out any of my other LOL videos, go right ahead, there is a giant playlist for them. For the most part, we are here just to find out if this hack actually works. So I'm not really gonna be testing water features or anything like that today. Let's go ahead and find our tear strip and give it a pull. Yeah! I did it, hey, my nails match the ball. I got the tear strip, guys. My clue says, looking sharp. Second layer, didn't work. Ooh, nice. Too bad it wasn't in one go. My stickers. Third layer. And here is my cup. It's a blue milk carton with a darker blue top. Fourth layer. Are these my shoes? Yep, we got some shoes. And they're black and white. And now our last layer. What does it feel like? I don't know what it feels like. 
Oh no! Smarty pants. All right, it still looks really cute, but I've already checked this out, so I don't want to look at it again. Darn it! All right, so far, the hack is incorrect, and it is most definitely smarty pants. Moving on, once again, this ball was also chosen from the exact spot that we're supposed to to get Boy Next Door. Now! <gasps> it's a little bee! And it's a gold ball. <gasps> it's probably gonna be King Bee. Okay, that's actually kind of cool. Still not Boy Next Door, but definitely not another double. So regardless, I'm happy, but I mean, still disproving the hack. Here are our stickers. So let's just go ahead and get our cup or bottle out. I'm both excited and also not because it's glittery. There's our cup. Ooh, told ya. It's a black and gold glittery top coffee cup. We'll just have to pretend that it's not super crooked and we'll move on. Here are our shoes and their little gold and black boots. And now the last layer reveals our outfit. Oh, so much glitter. It reminds me of Shimon Queens. We've got gold glittery shorts with a black band on top, as well as a black jacket with glittery gold trim around the collar, the front, and the sleeves. And now our ball. Here's our accessory, but I'm not sure what it is. Oh, we've got some gold and black headphones. And the side is patterned to look like the outside of an LOL ball. That's kind of cool. And here is our doll. Oh, there it is. Oh, he has freckles. So cute. I'm gonna take some of the glitter off of his eyes if I can. Nope, I can't. But that won't stop me from zooming in to show you his face. He's got brown eyes, crooked black eyebrows because all LOLs have messed up eyebrows. Some cute little freckles above his nose and some glitter that is full on stuck inside his iris. He's got a small plastic blemish underneath his rosy red cheeks and a lot of super gold glittery hair. He's also wearing some long black socks with two gold bands and he has holes behind his ears. You would think it's funny for me to point that out, but guess what? Smarty Pants didn't, and he's the one who came with glasses. So is it really that weird to point it out? Probably not. Now I just gotta dress up King B. And now he just needs headphones. Boom. He is ready. As cute as he is, I still can't help but notice that he is not Boy Next Door, which means we only have one more chance to try out that hack. But I'm not gonna lie, at this point, it's basically a bust because two out of three is still proving it wrong, really. Oh, darn. This one says, dance off. Layer two, so close. Our stickers, nobody cares about those. Layer three, and we have a black ball. And here is our cup. No, it's Dosey Dude, which we've gotten before. I mean, we can hope that it's just the wrong doll inside, so I'm just gonna continue opening it, but ugh, darn. Here are the shoes. And they are definitely do -si Dudes cowboy boots, which are red and brown. And finally, our Justin Bieber looking do -si Dude. Can you tell I've already done this? Oh, his face is ruined under his eyes. Aw, poor do -si Dude slash Bieber. Now I'm just gonna quickly get him dressed so we can move on to something a bit more uplifting because right now I'm really sad that I still don't have Boy Next Door. Okay guys, basically we're gonna throw this hack in the trash because not a single one of these dolls was Boy Next Door. But on the plus side, because we always need to remain positive, I now only need night and Boy Next Door to complete my LOL Boy series. And that's pretty cool. Find the positives. But I'm really sad because I really, really wanted Boy Next Door because he would have been perfect for the next portion of this video. <laughs> Moving on. Now we're gonna check out my world's smallest arcades. Ta-da! All right, let's do this properly. Here are all the world's smallest arcades that I was sent, but I actually went out and bought two more myself because I found them and realized I don't have them and wanted them. And if you haven't seen them before, they're actually pretty cool. So not only do they offer you a whole bunch of games that may or may not be classic favorites for you, but they even work. And just in case you love to truly show off, you can wear these as a keychain. Although I don't recommend that because they might bang off of things and get broken. So personally, I won't be doing that. I'm actually gonna use them for something else. Now, when it comes to pricing in Canada, these are basically $25 each before tax, unless you get them at EB Games where I found them for a bit less. But when it came to finding a US price for you guys, they were kind of all over the map when I looked online and were either sold in multiples or didn't list prices at all. So basically, if you know how much they cost, feel free to share that info below. Moving on to the actual packages themselves, they all say Tiny Arcade and have the name of whatever their game is, as well as some of the images on the front of a clear plastic package. Each package includes one game and comes with three AAA batteries already installed and they also give you the keychain as well as the instructions. They all say try me 
and they all offer original gameplay. And these are recommended for children over the age of eight and definitely not for those under three because they do contain small parts. Now I'm gonna open each one up so we can see what each little arcade unit looks like and we'll also give them a quick test. So let's go. All right, here are all seven of the mini arcade units. And I'm not gonna lie, the first thing I noticed is how annoying this keychain actually is. So my recommendation is that if you're not intending to use it as a keychain, take this off because otherwise that's, that's what you're dealing with. Each of these little units is probably about three inches tall, but my math is bad, so let's just not focus on whether or not that's correct. And each of them has a black plastic case with a small screen, red joystick, and two red buttons, which means they are all basically the same, excluding the artwork that's on the sides, as well as top and bottom of the front. And of course, the actual game itself. This was Space Invaders. And this one here is Galaga. This one is Frogger. This one is Dig Dug. Here is Miss Pac-Man. Here we have Tetris, which is one of the ones I bought myself after I realized that you could get Tetris. And here is regular Pac-Man, which is also one that I bought myself. Now when you look at the little instructions, it basically tells you how to turn on and off your system as well as maybe some troubleshooting and changing the batteries, but it doesn't tell you all the different types of arcades that you can get. So originally I actually thought I had all of them until I googled and found out that there's like a bunch more. So in the end, I have Seven, but I don't actually know how many there are in total, but I will definitely keep my eyes peeled so that I can get them. Are they blurry? No. Perfect. Now we're gonna take a quick look at each of these games. We're gonna focus on five different things. One, does this thing actually work? Two, what is the visual quality? Three, what is the audio quality? Four, how good is the game? And five, is it something that you can actually see yourself playing or is it too difficult? Obviously it's a novelty item, but I mean, if you plan on spending the money on this, chances are it's because you wanna play with it. When I first showed it to you, it was in trial mode. And according to the instructions, all we had to do was turn it off and now turn it back on, which will put it into a regular gameplay mode. I'm not gonna pretend that I was a genius like this on my own, because I actually filmed this part already saying that it didn't work, and my husband figured out that I'm a dummy. So now I know, and you know too. So now let's just go ahead and turn it on. <laughs> and now you can see the game is actually loading. So I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it better. So I've pushed start, and now we're gonna try the game. Oh, no, 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 go, Jen, go, Jen, go, do, 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 do. Okay. <laughs> All right. As you can see, I've died. <laughs> go, 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 go. No, I've died again. Hee, got one. Got one. Oh no, oh darn. Now we've tried it, Jen died, and I can sum up the experience. Yes, it actually worked. The screen was really nice and bright and very clear. Obviously tiny, but I mean, it's a tiny arcade. What do you expect? When it comes to the audio, it's actually pretty great and I can hear it very well. I'm not sure how that transferred over on camera, but in person, it is pretty good. When it comes to the playability, it's definitely tiny and it's only a thumb contraption, but once again, it's a novelty item. And lastly, when it comes to the actual game itself, it runs the exact same as as it would if you were playing this game on another console. Now I'm gonna go ahead and try out all these other games quickly just so you can see what they're like, but I anticipate the same results for all of them. And I'll let you know if anything comes up differently. This one here is Tetris, and is there a high score? Well, not yet, there's not. Jen's here now, so, you know, I'm gonna do it. Three, two, one, go. Ooh, no, what? Time it! Yeah! Come on, come on. No, oh, I don't wanna mess it up. Hee hee! Oh man, that one's not happening. Okay, if any of you had faith in my Tetris abilities, I lied to you. I'm sorry. The keychain gets in the way for sure. I think it's safe to assume that I must have been over-exaggerating when I felt that I was gonna make a high score, but once again, everything about this seemed pretty excellent. Woo! Time to fail again with the Pac-Man family. <laughs> and begin. I'm trying not to eat all the little capsules this time. Oh, I died already. Eat it, eat it. What did I just do? Why are you going there? Yeah, no, go down. Oh, I died. All right, turn that off. Once again, that worked out perfectly. Now we'll try out Dig Dug. Let's go ahead and turn that on. Oop, and hear the sound. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I've never played Dig Dug before. I don't think so anyways. Do I just get down? Like. Oh. 
Okay, whatever you're supposed to do, apparently I'm not doing it right. But either way, once again, the game itself works out really great. And I'm not sure if I commented on the color of the screens, but that looks really good and crisp as well. And now we'll move on to Frogger. High score, apparently not gonna be Jen. Time to sing my favorite song. Look both ways when you cross the street so you don't get hit by a car. <laughs> I actually sing that song to my kids as we cross the street. Safety first, friends. Wait, what do I do? Do I hop on a log? Hey, I'm in first place. Excellent, with 130 points. I dare you to beat my score. This game seems easy in theory. Oh, I almost made it, I almost made it. Go, Froggy, go. What? Well, forget that. Okay, clearly there was something faulty with this game because I was a hoppin' pro. I'm just kidding. Next up we have Galaga. You shoot. Pew, pew, pew. Pew, 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 pew. This one here is my jam. Oh, she says as she dies. All right, so I continued playing that for a few more minutes and I realized I wasn't filming. Here's what you missed. I died a lot more and I also got abducted and it was pretty cool. The sounds were great, the colors were great and I actually really like this one a lot. But now it's time to test out the last one which is Space Invaders. Same idea. Eek. Don't kill me. Yes. Did he get me? No! It's really hard to play teeny tiny games when you're looking through a camera. Oh, seriously? No, I was doing so good. Whatever. You guys saw me. I was doing like excellent. Hey guys, that was our quick look at all seven of the world's smallest or tiny arcades that I have here today. Not gonna lie, at $25 pre-tax Canadian, these are actually kind of cool. The biggest problem I'm having is honestly just the keychain, which is only useful if you plan on letting this dangle off of something, which I wouldn't recommend because one, it's probably gonna break, and two, you're just like flaunting a really cute and useful device for people to potentially steal from you. So not gonna lie, I'm probably gonna take these off and use it for some something else. And the last thing that I'm going to mention didn't really show up very well underneath the camera lights, but when these units are turned on, the top banner of each does light up. So I'm going to try to set that up so that you can see what it looks like after with the lights off. And that seems as good a time as any to move on. I'm going to temporarily move those arcades out of the way and show you what I created. Ta-da! A really tacky scene! Here you can see a basic little setup that I made using cardboard, hot glue, some fabric that looks like a tacky carpet, and a bit of black felt. Basically all you're gonna do is create whatever shape for your arcade that you want, glue it together, and add either scrapbook paper or just print a picture off the internet like I did here with my brick. Then go ahead and add whatever you want on the floor. Now that you've got yourself a little play space and super tacky patchwork carpet, which we're not gonna talk about because Jen's embarrassed by it, you're gonna work on decorating your walls. And you can do this any way you want. You can cut out pictures from packaging, decorate with stickers, or if you're going for a certain theme, you can print pictures off the internet and glue it to cardstock so that it's reinforced, which is exactly what I did here. And I know, I'm super original and I've called my arcade Jenny's Arcade. Now personally, I like to print my pictures off and glue them to cardstock, and then once it's dry like this, you can just cut it out. Ta-da! Now I'm just gonna add my pictures to the walls. And today I'm just gonna be using some sticky tape because I'm not exactly sure I'm committed to what this look is gonna be. But you can definitely glue it in or use Velcro or even sticky tack. That way you can change it around if you want to. So I'm going to make this side my food area. At this point you can honestly just keep decorating as much or as little as you'd like. But I think I'm going to stop here for now because I want to take more time to make it cooler. I just wanted to give you guys a quick idea of what you could do. And I'm just going to go ahead and add some arcades. We could do them back to back if those keychains weren't in the way, which is why I suggested taking them off. Or we could place them along the walls, which I think is what I'm going to do for now. And as you can see, we could easily just keep adding mini arcades, but I will show you a frugal alternative in the form of more paper craft. Just like you can do when making signs for the walls, if you go online and type in free printable arcades, you'll find a ton of different types that you can print out and glue onto cardstock to assemble on your own. So right now, I've already gone ahead and started Miss Pac-Man as well as a Donkey Kong game, but there are literally so many you can get. And the best part is majority of those printables are free, or you can purchase some more detailed ones if you want them to be fancier. If you haven't done something like this before, basically you're printing off a picture and then folding it and gluing in tabs to create a 3D object. It's a really easy craft, don't worry. I would rate it a two for a novice crafter. As long as you can use a printer and a glue stick, you should be all right.
Now what I'm gonna do is fold in all these tabs as well as anytime there's a break or change in color. One thing I will recommend if you are not familiar with or confident in your folding of cardstock skills is with an adult's help, get a ruler and follow along the line with a little X-Acto knife first just to make it easier on you to fold it down. Now that I've used the X-Acto knife to start off all my bends, I'm going to fold them down and then attach them together. You can do this in many different ways, tape, glue, hot glue, basically whatever you prefer. But since I'm going for a quick tutorial right now, I'm gonna go with clear scotch tape. Just so you guys know, my paper crafting skills are usually much better than this quick one I'm doing today, okay? Okay guys, if you are not in a rush and trying to make a really fast paper craft, I definitely recommend using glue and taking your time because it will be a lot nicer looking in the end. Not as neat and clean as it could be, but I promised you a cheaper alternative and well, you got one. If you take your time, these little paper craft arcades will be just as useful in a little arcade setup as these toy ones here. And the best part is it's gonna cost you next to nothing. So go ahead and make as many as you like in whatever size you need and you can make yourself your very own arcade. And to be honest, it doesn't look half bad. Just put more care into it than I did. Let's check it out with a doll. I knew that these world's smallest ones will be perfect for LOL size dolls as well as other small toys, but the paper craft one that I just made would be perfect for a hair adorables size doll. And if if you made it taller, it would be perfect for a Barbie. In fact, you could use paper craft or regular crafting to do whatever you want in any type of room setup that you make for your toys. In fact, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make some more things to decorate the rest of my arcade and show you how much fun can be had just using your own creativity, imagination, and recycled items from around your home. You don't have to spend money. Okay guys, that is it. We have opened some LOL boys, we have checked out some really cool world's smallest arcades, and we kinda sorta made one. It's almost like a super video. If you know some who would actually enjoy watching it, then please share it with them. And if you enjoyed it yourself, then please make sure you remember to comment, like, and subscribe. You can let me know down below what you liked or didn't like, as well as what you might suggest to make my arcade even cooler. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!